Hello everyone, this is Zook, and today I'm going to be drawing something somewhat special. Um, I've decided to enlighten certain people about a particular topic which came up quite a few times in previous videos, namely Dracula, or Vlad the Impaler, or Vlad Tsepes, basically the person who served as inspiration for what I can call a revolution in uh, the world of fantasy and folklore. Uh, before I get into the story, however, I just want to say that he was by no means what you associate vampires with today. Uh, quite frankly, I'm pretty sure that he had no fucking clue what a vampire was. But uh, he, what he was, he was a warlord who ruled for a very brief period of time, but accomplished quite a lot. Uh, he ruled over a place called Volachia, which is basically the southern part of Romania, where the capital, or my city, is situated. Not Transylvania. He had very little to do with Transylvania compared to Wallachia. All he wanted was Wallachia. Uh, so, anyway. Vlad the Impaler, he was born as Vlad III. He was son of Vlad II. Go figure. Now, Vlad II, he was a member of the Order of the Dragon. Sounds cool, right? This order was uh, founded by the King of Hungary around the 1430s. And it was basically like a fraternity for knights. Uh, who swore to protect the Christian world against the Turks, who at that time wanted to control Europe and they were on a war path to uh, conquer as much as they could. Uh, after he was admitted into the order, Vlad's father became known as Vlad Dracul. Now, Dracul back then meant the dragon. Uh, nowadays, it means the devil. So it, it had two meanings. People don't really use it nowadays with... Uh, uh, this the meaning of dragon. We use dragon, which is yeah, makes sense. Um, his son became as became known as Vlad Dracula. Now the ending Ula, from what I've read, means the son of. So you know, it's basically the son of the dragon. That was his deal, and uh, it's from that name that the modern version of Dracula uh, became mainstream in the Western world, mostly. In any case. Uh, Dracula, as I'm going to call him, just because it's easier. He was born in the winter of 1431 in a fortress town in Transylvania. And I've been there. It's quite a nice city. It's awesome. Uh, during the first few years of his childhood, he, he lived there in Transylvania. And then he was brought to the capital where he was educated like any uh, prince should be in uh, military combat, art, science, foreign language, etc., uh, five years later, Dracula's dad became ruler of Wallachia after killing the previous ruler, because that's how he rolled. Um, now, the Hungarians, they were pretty pissed, so uh, they dethroned his dad six years later. Uh, the thing with Wallachia was that it was caught between the... Um, uh, it was caught between Hungary and the Ottoman Empire, the Turks, and they both wanted power, and they both wanted to expand, so... Uh, at almost every point in history, we were either one or the other's bitch, depending on what interests we had. Now, Dracula's father came back to the throne after forming an alliance with the Turks, and he gave the Sultan his, his two sons, uh, Dracula and his brother, um, as a guarantee that he will respect the, the treaty. Now, these, these few years spent with the Turks were probably the most important contribution to Dracula becoming Dracula. Uh, first off, he was pissed at his dad because he had shit all over what the Order of the Dragon stood for. Secondly, he p was pissed at his brother, who eventually converted to Islam and became a, sort of a pale shade of Turk, if you will. And thirdly, after all of that, he was absolutely furious at the Turks themselves, who had beat and tortured him because he had a shitty attitude. You know, typical. Uh, <laughs> in 1447... Boyars, which were like these fat-ass corrupt aristocrats, they formed an alliance with the Hungarians and they killed Dracula's dad. Uh, the Turks saw that as an opportunity and invaded Wallachia, putting Dracula as as ruler of that, uh, that region, even though he couldn't personally stand the Turks. Uh, after that, the Hungarians invaded us again. They dethroned Dracula and Dracula ran away to Moldavia, where he lived with his uncle, who was also killed after that. Everyone was getting murdered. Everyone was getting taken out. Now, Dracula ran to Hungary and uh, eventually formed a pact with them because they were interested in his knowledge of uh, the inner workings of the Turks and because he had lived with them for so long. 
1453, the Turks uh, got hungry, so they destroyed Constantinople, which was basically like the last uh, bastion defending Europe from the Turks. And they started expanding throughout the entire Europe. Uh, three years after that, they decided to attack Hungary and get the shit over with already because Hungary was becoming a pain in the ass for them. Uh, so while the Hungarians were busy dealing with the Turks, Dracula raised a little army and took over Wallachia, killing the ruler that the Hungarians had put on the throne. I mean, seriously, dirty. They were they were playing very dirty, these guys. Now, this is a time when, when uh, Dracula sort of became a national hero for us. Um, Wallachia was in like the worst state ever. Everyone was poor. Everyone was starving. Commerce was awful. Uh, it was just like a few nobles and boyars that controlled all the money. Kind of like Romania is today, if you will. So Dracula started cleaning the place out. He put in very strict laws against thieves and uh, corrupt politicians, if you will. He had no mercy for the corrupt whatsoever. But he managed to turn a shithole of a region into a prosperous one. Uh, he gave peasants land, he gave peasants positions, you know, and in turn also raised an army in a period of six years. So in six years, he completely turned the country upside down and made it a prosperous one. So that's pretty admirable. Now, after that, after everything was said and done, he started raiding the Saxons, who uh, throughout this whole time, they were conspiring with the fat-ass boyars, and they were both responsible for killing his dad. So this is about the time when the Saxons, you know, because they couldn't really fight him, they started spreading rumors about him, uh, about him being like the psycho son of a bitch, killing innocents for like no reason at all. But all he was doing really was earning his uh, country's independence and restoring it to its rightful state. So, you know, Saxons were full of shit. Now, in 1459, um, a new crusade was raised against the Ottomans, and Dracula decided to form an alliance with the Hungarians, even though he, he didn't really have any friends anywhere, just because he didn't really want to see the Turks take over Wallachia again. <clears throat> so the Turks sent over some emissaries to force Vlad to pay tribute and give like a few hundred of his soldiers uh, to the Sultan. And he sort of had a Leonidas moment where he killed the uh, the envoys and they he nailed the, their turban to their heads. So that was pretty cool. And then the Sultan got pissed off and he sent 10,000 guys to deal with Vlad's flippantry, but he wouldn't have none of that. And he ambushed them in a, in a narrow pass and impaled all of them. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, the Sultan was, um, wasn't very pleased about that. Three years later, Vlad uh, crossed the Danube into Bulgaria where the Turks were stationed, uh, just getting ready for the big haul. And he launched like a few surprise attacks on their camps, and he killed about 24,000 of them. He was a pretty sneaky fucker, this Dracula guy, you know. So you can imagine the Sultan was rather pissed off. So he raised an army of 90,000 men to deal with Vlad once and for all, because he it, enough was enough. And I get it. Vlad only had around 30,000 guys, so direct combat would have basically failed 100%. So instead, he repeatedly hit the Turks at night, killing um, killing them by the thousands. In one night, in one night, he actually killed um, what was it, fifteen thousand Turks, and that night became you know legendary. It's sort of it's called like the night attacks or something in English. Uh, so kudos to him. He was sick and uh, as a military leader and just leader overall, he was very good. Now, at the same time, Dracula's brother, who had, uh, I mentioned before, had turned to Islam, uh, he was leading a sort of an elite battalion of soldiers, and they had gunpowder and had a fuck ton of cash, like infinite money. So eventually they pushed Vlad back to his fortress and besieged it. Besieged it. Now Vlad went to Hungary to ask uh, his allies for help, but the king of Hungary threw him in jail and forged a letter in his name, uh, stating that he was trying to make peace with the Sultan. Uh, and this is only because the, the King of Hungary had spent all the war money on personal, um, personal expenses. And to this day, a lot of Romanians still hold a grudge against Hungarians for how much they fucked us over. Not to mention the fact that they, uh, they actually claimed for the longest time that Transylvania was rightfully theirs, even though the country was officially, uh, unified in the 1800s. So Hungarians, yeah, a lot of people here still hate Hungarians. And it's, I mean, they, they did fuck us pretty bad. Anyway, by 1474, the Turks were up to their no good deeds again. So 
the ruler of Moldavia uh, stepped in and put in a good word for uh, for Dracula or Vlad. So they released him from the slammer because the Turks were very close to our borders and they needed help. So with help from the Hungarians, he uh, he took back Wallachia, but then he was assassinated two months later. So, I mean, poor Vlad, you know, he wasn't really a bad guy. He was just trying to do the right thing for his country, but everyone was trying to fuck with him. He had the boyars who who allied with either the Hungarians, either the Saxons, either the the Turks, basically everyone that was against Vlad, you know, and he couldn't kill all of them because they still controlled a large part of the country. But he killed a lot of them in any case. He cleaned up the place pretty well. So, yeah, uh, a lot of people that think that Vlad was a crazy son of a bitch don't really know the, the whole story. They just know the rumors that were spread in the by the Saxons and the Germans and the Russians. They all had, like, some sort of thing to say about us, and a lot of it was untrue. So, yeah, that was about it. As for the drawing, it took around three hours. It didn't take very long because it's not really insanely detailed. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to have something to, like, something visually to show you guys while I talk about Vlad, because I'm personally a big fan of this guy. You know, I, I'm not a patriot, but I can appreciate when someone is trying to do the right thing. And Vlad, even though his measures were, were slightly extreme for some tastes, con- considering his background and his past and what he had gone through with the Turks and the mentality of that uh, period in history, I mean, it was the, you know, the 15th century, uh, I can understand why he did what he did. When when shit is really bad, you know, desperate times call for desperate measures. And this is a prime example of that. Not to mention the guy was a genius from a military standpoint. So maximum respect in that sense. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little history lesson. And uh, I hope you uh, stop talking about blood sucking. Uh, sh- oh, maybe I should mention this. Uh, Bram Stoker, the way he got his info about Dracula, it was from like a, a treaty about... Um, like history from that, uh, what was it? First off, he had a Hungarian friend that told him. Secondly, um, his book was seen as a sort of a, a move in favor of Romanians because it basically claimed that Transylvania was ours. So Hungarians were sort of pissed that the whole world was reading a book that was stating that uh, Transylvania belongs to Romania. So that's kind of nice. He did us a favor in that sense. But... Uh, <laughs> The fact that he uh, came up with this whole blood-sucking bullshit, uh, that didn't really serve us very well. But yeah, uh, so he got his info from like uh, sort of an essay on um, on on the principalities or something like that from that time in history. And he just picked like random names, you know, he saw this guy that was uh, like supposed to be cruel and vicious and etc. So he just chose that guy to portray his little creation in his book. So that was about it. But anyway, again, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.